really titled presentation called Get Out of Your Chateau, which I realize after meeting all these wonderful people here might be the wrong tone, but it's a big night, so <laughs> here we go. Um, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a French wine maker, which you can probably tell from my uh, outrageous accent and my gloriously manicured mustache. But even though if I, and I don't fit all the stereotypes of, of uh, French winemakers, there are some things that we do kind of all have in common. We've got really comfortable lifestyles. We're, I mean, no winemaker is ever going to be rich, but we lead very rich lives. And I think, in a way, it's been one of the biggest problems for our, our business because we get really complacent. I mean, we work hard on the wine, and we, we keep track of a few local organizations. Uh, France isn't very complicated. <laughs> Uh, those organizations have organizations that organize them, and, and then we, we, you don't know most of them because we disguise them with a couple hundred AOCs, but, but, but then don't laugh too much because you'll get pretty complicated too. Uh, you take a simple journey from winemaker to consumer, add a couple cultural eccentricities that I really enjoy, um, and generally speaking, I find that no matter where I go, <laughs> people have found a way to make wine really hard to enjoy. And it's, it's honestly a miracle that any of you have wine in the stores at all. Like, I don't know how much money, time, and energy in any country we burn through just to enjoy something that's so inherently fun. There's a huge cost on everybody. On the winemakers, we're spending time and money. You guys put a lot of energy into this. And we wonder, where's all that energy going? Is it just vanishing? Despite all this, because I'm not just a negative Nancy, I think... What's been really remarkable, I've been living in Napa for about six months working on a, on a startup project out there, and despite everything, despite all the obstacles, the US is actually really good at direct-to-consumer. You've got all third-party platforms like the one I'm working for, Naked Wines, you've got a lot of direct-to-consumer wine clubs, and in the meantime, in France, where we actually have no obstacles to selling direct-to-consumer, it's crickets. Like, nothing is going on. And, and I wonder if it's because our chateau is nicer, but but I'm not. I, there's that's that complacency, and we right we like to complain. We had a president who <laughs> just uh, didn't even drink wine for five years. All we did was over his wife. We we and now <laughs> now we have a new president who does drink. But the thing is the same. We just sit around and, and we whinge. We don't we don't get out enough. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you like the e card because I ran out of slide ideas and it's e cards for the rest of the presentation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a real question of, uh, are we doing enough just by making awesome wine? Or should we be focusing on, on also the act of drinking awesome wine and sharing awesome wine? And um, there's some really cool ideas out there. So I, people have some awesome <laughs> initiatives. Uh, one of my friends uh, in, in the South just uh, raised eight grand on Kickstarter for a wine truck, like a food truck that you just load up with wine and drive around France. We can do that. It's nuts that we don't all do that. Um, it's, and the large part of this is finding, finding the right uh, audience. But, she knew, uh, to, she's been blogging for, for, I guess, a decade now, and she knows who to interface with and who would be interested in that kind of quirky idea. And personally, I, I've barked up the wrong tree for years trying to get conventional media to talk about my wines. When I started talking to winemakers, interestingly, and, and just writing about other winemakers, that's when stuff started happening. Because then, very cool, keen, plugged-in consumers started coming saying, oh, I see that you're the winemaker who drinks other people's wine. That's cool. Can, can you tell me where I should go in the region? And that's what I really like. I want, I want everybody to kind of tap into a common theme that I've heard come up at a lot of the breakout sessions and a lot of the conversations. Don't count on winemakers to invite you to things. We suck at it. Um, go out and, and force us to be cool. Force us to get out of the comfort of our... Of our uh, our sort of winemaking bubble, where we, we have free wine. Uh, so once the day is done, we're not compelled to do much more. <laughs> um, if, if you can do that, then if you can tap into it and get a couple winemakers to do something something cool, then you're gonna change the way everybody in that equation, not the whole wine world, but you and that winemaker think about the business. Um, I, I'm also around to, to talk about all these things, so if you want to talk about Naked Wines and the European Wine Bloggers Conference, or Star Wars, Star Wars. Or Star Wars. Star Wars yeah, whatever, um, <laughs> e-cards, uh, thanks for listening, and um, have a wonderful day.